the ATP World Tour Finals. The height of prestige for an obvious reason, only the top 8 guys from this season need apply. If you're ninth on this year's list, you won't even get a reply. Unless someone's injured. Joe Willy Songa's looking stronger with each passing year. The flying Frenchman's a born entertainer, leaves crowds grinning from ear to ear. He reached an Aussie final in 08. Ever since then I've thought he was great. This year, a Wimbledon semi, as well as a US quarter. I'll hold my hands up. I'm a loyal supporter of the dynamite skills of Joe Wilfred. Marty Fish isn't quite as spectacular, and clearly French isn't in his vernacular. His US Open outburst at Songa wasn't particularly nice, and if they match up here, there's sure to be a little spice. Marty's a big serving guy from the States. He wants to win something big before it's too late. Could this be his moment? The verdict on Thomas Burditch is he's worthy of respect. You get a fierce forehand and monster serve from this giant check. He's yet to win a major final, but he's come close once or twice. And he'll surely win one someday with hitting so clean and precise. He might even win this one. David Ferrer is small in stature compared to most of these guys. But what he lacks in size, he makes up in passion as a fire in those eyes. La Fioria Roja. This diminutive Spaniard's one of the best returners in the game. He almost always gets it back, makes you earn each point you play. But does it take more than that to win? Next up is one of our own. We met him as a teen, now he's fully grown. Andy Murray's critics say he flatters to deceive. One of the best in the world, but finds the slams out of his reach. But with three tournament wins during his recent Asian visit, Murray's on top form. He's pushing his game to the limit. If he carries this form to the end of November, he'd give the O2 crowd a few days to remember. In his way stand three of the best. Next up, the man that I dare to suggest is probably the best of all time. The Swiss master with 16 slams, flawless fashion and pristine hands. Backhand, forehand, he just doesn't have a weakness. He might be past his prime, but he's still brilliant in his uniqueness. Federer's defending champion and going for his sixth title. But win, lose or draw, he's a legend for sure. And his presence is still just as vital. But let's move on. Vamos Rafa, they cry, all around the world. His poster's on the wall of every tennis-loving girl, and probably plenty of guys. You can't really blame them, look at those eyes. After a vintage 2010, many thought he'd dominate once again. But this time he hasn't had it all his own way. Rafa's year's been a disappointment, is what some would say. On the one hand, he won his sixth French Open. Equaled Borg's record, that'll soon be broken. But there was one man who beat him in six of the finals. Smashed more records this year than a hammer on vinyl. Good old Novak, he's like a throwback to a former age. All that swagger and aggression seen him rattle the odd cage or two. But when you're playing as well as he is, no one can tell you what to do. He's won the Australian, US and Wimbledon, and many, many more. Right now his game's almost perfect. It doesn't seem to have any flaw. After years spent in the shadows of Roger and Rafa, he stepped firmly into the limelight. This is certainly his time, right? 2011 is the year of Novak Djokovic. This would be the icing on the cake. Can anyone really be stopping it?